Welcome to the Trust Factor Radio, bringing you interviews and insights to unlock the power of the subconscious mind to create authority, credibility, and trust with your host, the authority architect and best-selling author, Neil Howe. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your host, Neil Howe, and today my special guest is Alex Alexakis. He is the founder of pixelchefs.com and the digital strategy manager for Westgate Resorts uh, Timeshare Division. And Alex gives brands the survival skills they need to survive in the wild, wild web. His approach to digital marketing involves hardcore optimizations, candid recommendations, and none of the salesy sleaze you'll find online. He is a black belt in web design, UI design, and a certifiable SEO addict. Early in his career, Alex identified the need for designing with SEO optimization in mind and orienting a design to capture conversion from the very first glance. For over 12 years, Alex has created captivating designs for companies including Westgate Resorts, NBC, uh, Leroy Selmans, Ruth's Chris, and Iberia Bank. He has a passion for artistic storytelling, and he seeks to reveal the unique story in every project. Alex's latest project is the Orlando SEO site clinic.com, which is a monthly meetup group that provides live technical on-page and off-page analysis for local businesses, uh, local web designers, and anyone that might have a website. Well, welcome to the show, Alex. Uh, Hello, Neil. How's it going? How's everything? Hello, everyone. I'm doing very well. Well, I want to find out more about uh, yourself, Alex, first. Uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, how you got uh, involved in SEO, and, you know, where that has led you with Westgate and now Pixel Shifts. So uh, I've always been uh, very curious, you know, and I started actually my uh, my career as a designer. You know, I'm uh, actually, uh, uh, a lot of people don't believe that, but I'm a photorealist painter. You know, I have a degree in illustration from Ringling. And when I started doing that, I realized that, you know, this art was not for me. You know, I, I loved it. But, you know, the challenge, uh, you know, and the money making wasn't there. So as uh, around 2006, 2007, I started realizing that everybody, you know, that the graphic design industry was kind of dying. And then, uh, you know, there was not much money to it, at least with the skills that I had at the time. So I decided to switch my full focus on uh, web design. And uh, within a year of uh, when I did that, uh, uh, we created Pixel Cephs uh, with my partner back then, uh, Mike. And uh, Mike and I actually, uh, the first thing we did was we created one of the first iPhone repair companies in the United States. So we created one of the first uh, companies where you ship your iPhone uh, over to uh, to us. We, uh, we had some other partners that fixed it and then we shipped it back out. So we built that website. We did an amazing work. And then we were like, okay, how do we bring people here? How do we get people to buy our stuff? So, uh, Pixelsets.com was the original place where actually I started getting involved in the different communities, understanding uh, how to provide content and PR to uh, companies to talk about you and grow your business. And that, after that, I couldn't look back. Uh, that was what started everything for me. Hmm. And that's, uh, I think, a big problem from uh, a business standpoint is when they get the website designed, uh, especially 10 years ago when you were talking about uh, it wasn't really designed from an SEO aspect that might look very nice, but it didn't function properly. So you saw that need to combine both uh, web design and SEO? Yeah, I mean, t- 10 years ago, the thing is there were people that understood that. And back then there was a uh, uh, with all the black hat and all the like uh, different techniques. I mean, there were guys out back then 10 years ago that they were, you know, s- stacking money in the bank because they understood uh, the concept and they understood how they can rank easily back then. So, but for us, for a big brand that didn't want, like we had a brand who put all our money in it. We didn't want to do any black hat. We we're worried about it. So we, we, yeah, we saw the need that we have to take that beautiful design now and understand it and take it apart and figure out how do we make it rank. 
So that's, uh, yeah, and that kind of connected the design aspect with uh, and uh, conversion uh, to, together, you know, to, to create sales. Hmm. So tell me about Westgate Resorts, because that is a massive company. They seem to call me every day. <laughs> yeah. So uh, how did you get involved with uh, Westgate? I, I really love those uh, uh, timeshares down in Orlando. So with Westgate, I started, uh, so I, what I do right now, I, I, I'm part of the timeshare division and I create pretty much a digital strategy for the timeshare division for Westgate. So uh, how did I get involved is uh, I, I was reached out, approached um, by them and we uh, sat down and we talked about some design ideas, some SEO, because at the time, that, that was right after the, the, the big hit with the economy. Uh, took a crash, and then um, they were kind of right back up, and they needed someone someone to look at the, what they had, and and you know create a plan where basically we're gonna take you know take whatever they had before, but make it convert better and actually make it work better with less uh, people and less uh, spend, right? So uh, when I walked in there, you know the sites uh, that I deal with, uh, which is WestgateReservations.com. Which, if uh, people call you about timeshare from Westgate, it's most likely from that division of that website. Um, and uh, so that site was actually uh, had been penalized from Google. They have done the people before. You know, I took over the management of it. Had done some crazy things with it. So and also it did not look great. It just did not convert. Everything was like all over the place. So we created. You know, so when I started there, I. Um, I went there and, and basically what I had to do is like figure out how we can make it better conversion wise, aesthetically, and also how can we bring in more sales, you know? So that's how we started working with them. But it, it was a, uh, it was a big challenge. There's so much more that went into it on the technical side, but in uh, simple terms, that's how I got involved in Westgate. Hmm. And you've been doing that for a good number of years now. Yeah. I've been there now uh, six years. And, uh, you know, and every year we have about, I don't know, like 40, 50 percent growth year over year uh, in all our channels. Because one of the things that, that I like, I don't know if I don't want to say I invented that because I did not. But, but what I liked and I got influence on doing is usually major companies, uh, what they do is like they silo the departments, like they will silo uh, the SEO department, if there if there's even one in there, or uh, there was and there was silo the paid media and there was silo uh, the the IT department, and so now if you want to make any change on the website, you literally have to go through like 15 different people and get approvals to make changes. Well, in Westgate, you know what we did, uh, and the main plan was to create the team that's uh, you know that you know manages the site. It's all one. So you have the paid media, the SEO team, the writers, designers, uh, programmers, all under one team. So by doing that, you could easily like change, like we could make, think of a plan today, you know, and they can implement that plan in literally like three to four days, which in other companies mm -hmm. will take months. Yeah, and you know, that's not the first time that I have heard that problem that uh, it, with so many departments like that, nothing ever gets done on these big uh, sites because there's too many people to contact and it takes months and months just to make simple changes, which is absolutely crazy. But uh, work, working with these big sites, obviously they have their own issues and their own problems. But tell me who it is that you help with uh, Pixel Chefs. What kind of companies do you uh, help grow there? So with Pixel Chefs, you know, uh, because uh, uh, I am always interested in the things that, you know, because of the capacity and how I work and how my team is structured uh, outside of Westgate, you know, I uh, kind of like nitpick and choose clients that they're in very competitive niches like uh, drug rehabs. Um, I work with uh, uh, injury lawyers and um, engineering firms. So, uh, and, you know, I also help a handful of like uh, smaller local uh, businesses, but, you know, the majority of my business and, and it comes from uh, these uh, very uh, competitive um, industries and markets 
Um, so, uh, and this and these companies, you know, they there's especially the drug rehabs. I mean, they have so many problems. And uh, I mean, if anybody follows it, uh, there were uh, massive companies that come over and uh, you know buy all the uh, you know like outbid all the campaigns. So, like the minimum bid for a PPC campaign, for example, is like fifty dollars per click. So what that does, all these investment firms is like they're, they're coming in, buying these drug rehabs and killing out the little guys. So Google put a stop on that. But by putting a stop to that, you know, you still have to go through all kinds of uh, technical um, changes. So basically, yeah, I try to work with people that they have very technical problems mostly or they have an industry that's very challenging. Um, and I like doing that, as I said, because the... Uh, I prefer to spend my time on something that is going to be higher in return than than something that you know that is not going to give back as a as a return for my time. Mm. Well, let's talk about that drug rehab uh, niche for a minute because I know uh, Google stopped uh, showing any paid ads for that because of the the campaigns that were going on there, mm-hmm. um, but. What problems did that make uh, come come from that? If if they're stop getting all these leads from these companies that were selling uh, phone calls to them for you know four or five hundred dollars each, yeah. um, what ended up happening with these companies that weren't getting the calls anymore? You talked a little bit about the technical side of uh, things. Explain that a little bit more to me. Well, the issue is like the past year, to be honest, is uh, especially after the, um, uh, I believe it was like last June, uh, after the the elections and stuff, you know, when they decided to change the, they decided to change the the way the uh, insurances are and health insurance work. A lot of the companies, what happened is they started to be way more careful who they're paying money to. So uh, a lot of these drug rehabs had problems, first of all, collecting money for services they render already. So that was the first problem. And then you had the other, this, and then you had these uh, investment companies that either owned uh, like thousands of drug rehabs all over the United States or owned like fake ones. They would go and make fake listings on Google and make fake companies were basically in order to sell leads. So now when you uh, go to a, no, to a real drug rehab and you sell it for $500, that drug rehab, the owner, it doesn't know, first of all, I mean, yes, there's, when you buy the lease, you can figure out if they're qualified for your insurance plans and all that stuff. But in reality, you can pay 500 bucks. But because the, the, the insurance market is so, like, it's so weird now, like they don't know if they're going to collect the money. Uh, so that was one of the first issues that I think um, – so a couple of associations got together and got to, uh, you know, work with Google, say, hey, you know, we can't be doing that because of these problems. So um, they say, you know, they stopped a lot of the paid ads. To be honest, my clients uh, ad campaigns, they never got shut down. So, um, but, uh, and I'm, I'm not sure why. Uh, and everybody, you know, would say the ads are down. My ads never were shut down. I don't know if it was a mistake or not. Uh, but also, um, when we verified all of our locations, uh, we uh, we had to do a verification where Google called us and we literally had to make an appointment, and they did a video meeting where they would show we had to show like the the entrance, uh, the waiting areas, the rooms, the services, uh, business cards, the sign on the roads. I mean, it was pretty intense. So I, I'm not sure if that was I was maybe under a test or something. I'm not sure about that, but but uh, our ads were never shut down for that. Well, that's a pretty intensive check from Google to make sure that you are a legitimate business. But, yes. but for all those legitimate businesses that were out there that were getting these leads by paying for them and they got shut down, did that focus more energy on the SEO side? Um, my client, I cannot speak with four, about for everyone, you know, my clients, you know, we actually focus mostly on SEO. Um, and the reason why is because, you know, uh, if you have a legit facility, SEO 
uh, it's I don't want to say it's easy, but it's it's pretty straightforward. There's a lot of things you can do with the local communities. You can uh, set things up. So so with my clients, you know, I mean, they um, they they do not have an issue with that. And and I think uh, I worked with two facilities. One of them used to buy the leads, and then they stopped. But they uh, you know, and it was a hustle. You know, it was difficult for them. So they had to figure out new ways of um, of marketing. And usually, to be honest. With all my clients, the most successful ones are not just the ones that focus on paid ads or SEO. They're ones that they focus on a lot of other things outside the internet too because whatever happens outside the internet can potentially provide you with uh, authority for your website, So, uh, which, is, uh, which a lot of people don't understand. You know, it's, it's a, if you're online, it's a business. So it's like you have to let people know who you are. So, right, and I, I, I like that aspect of things as well because ultimately when you know, somebody is searching on Google, they're getting 20 results on you know, the search engine result page and they still have to make a choice uh, from that point. So when they yeah. actually click through to your website, what are the important things to have on a website that's really going to help with conversion? Well, I mean, we can start from the search, you know, the search results, to be honest, uh, because um, so the, the first metric that really matters, the CTR, the click-through rate from the, so if I search, I don't know, like drug rehabs in Atlanta, right? So we're going to get a list of, um, of uh, websites, and then from there, you have to make a choice on what fits mostly your search, because your searches could be uh, drug rehab in Atlanta closer to me, or it could, it could vary. So now your search results must, uh, you know, your titles and meta descriptions are pretty much your main sale point uh, to get the users right onto your website. So um, I use different techniques and stuff to increase this, uh, uh, this uh, the CTR. And it has to do with uh, all that new stuff that Google is doing with JSON and schema, star ratings and and showing reviews right on the search results. And there's a million things you can do if you set up the websites properly. So right now, like even with the travel stuff, like with Westgate, you know, we can, I can be ranking position seven, but because we're able to show our star ratings uh, on position seven or six, you know, I will still get, uh, I will increase my, my click-through rate 10, 15%, uh, and most likely get more clicks than the person that's position one, two, three. Uh, so there is ways to adjust all that. So that's one metric, uh, click-through rate. So, and then once you get them on the site, uh, the beautiful thing is, you know, you have to, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things you do, you know, uh, and depends, it depends what industry. Um, if you want to talk about the drug rehab, people want to feel like, you know, that, that it's safe to call, right? They want to feel confident that they can talk to somebody. They need to... Um, to know that you can actually help them. They need to know that maybe you take the insurance they have. Uh, they need to see their facility because a lot of uh, customers might feel that they are, um, you know, they don't want to be in a place where, I don't know, like with homeless people or, you know, you know it's, it's, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of things that it goes through people's minds. So the only thing they want is they want somebody to, to reach out and help. So in the landing page, you have to make sure that you break everything down clean, you know, I like to write things in bullet points. I like to uh, show some pictures of the facilities and what's inside, uh, where are they located. I like to show some of the certifications, especially if the facility is certified with uh, like car for something like that, that they're, you know, legit uh, drug rehabs. Um, so so we like, I like to show all that. And I like to give the, the client the choice because sometimes there might be, in their office and they're doing that and they don't want nobody to hear. So maybe, you know, contact form. And sometimes maybe they're in need, you know, and they really need to call somebody like at two, three in the morning. Um, a lot of the forms come like three, four in the morning, believe it or not. Uh, you know, so it's, uh, so you have to, to, to give the people like what they need, you know, you have to, to uh, get them in their mind and, and search their mindset when they're searching to find out exactly what, um, what goes through the mind and help them. And that goes a long way into, you know, what you have to do. You really have to get into the mind of the customer in order to understand what they're looking to see. 
you know, and I, I know these trust triggers that you're talking about, whether it's photos, whether it's certifications, mm -hmm. uh, how important are these to make people feel safe and that they are in the right place? Uh, I noticed on your own website, the Pixel Chefs, that you have uh, these trust triggers with like uh, being a Google partner and the SEM Rush Academy and Yext. How important are those to making people feel that they're dealing with the right company? Um, I think, uh, here's the thing. Uh, I feel that they are um, different, sync, uh, different actual symbols. I feel they have different uh, weight than others. Like um, I was working on an e-commerce site, for example, and I was looking at the trust symbols for uh, the SSL certificate and the different uh, things that make users feel more confident to, to buy from a website, right? And I read that the Norton uh, website security icon that sits on, you know, floats around your screen, that people that use that, uh, they have higher conversions and because they're more trusted because people know Norton and so they feel more connected with it versus if you just had like a locker, a locket with, uh, you know, SSL certified, they might not even know what that is. So branding, brand has to do a lot and understanding how to ride the brand and use it uh, and, you know, squeeze the benefits out of it. I think it's very important. So, I mean, on my website, I'm a little bit guilty because, uh, you know, I haven't updated anything on there, you know, and I have a lot of other stuff and that I've done. But I feel, you know, seeing that I'm certified that I work with these companies, people might feel that, hey, you know, this guy knows his stuff, right? Um, and at least, you know, being able to to pick up the phone and say, yeah, Alex, I need this, this, and this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so they're important, for sure. So talk to me about... Uh, the storytelling aspect. I know in the, the intro said you like being able to tell that story on the web page. You know, how important is that to tell, you know, that emotional story that gets people uh, to want to do business with you as well? Well, well, the story on a website comes with a branding and a lot of people have, uh, a, a, you know, the, a lot of companies because, you know, they, they focus a lot of uh, just sell, sell, sell. They kind of forget that at some point after growth, you need to have a brand, you need to tell a story, right? So um, I think the storytelling on a website is very important. Like I need to tell people, okay, uh, what caused the company being that big? What is the difference between the services? What do you do different that, that makes you better than everybody else? How does your experiences connect with a certain industry or what you do? And, and pretty much, you know, uh, especially when it comes to a website, like people, you know, you need to understand how to, to use like trigger words, like triggered uh, words. Um, so, so your uh, clients are more likely to buy. Like if you start talking about, you know, if I'm start describing a pizza, if I say to you, oh, this is a pizza, or if I start telling you, okay, this is a, a beautiful pizza that, you know, with a fresh dough made uh, from water, I don't know, from New York and, you know, uh, nice cheese and, uh, you know, all that stuff. You start putting an image in your head and that, that creates an actual, like, image where the person is more likely to purchase, you know, or to be connected to your website. So I try to figure out ways to, um, and usually because, you know, people don't really read much, you know, they go, they skim the website. You need to figure out where is the best way to tell the story from, you know, and when you describe things to connect fa as fast as possible with the, with the visitor. So storytelling for me is important, you know, and I do start my whole, um, the way I work, and I'm actually having a, a, a talk about this coming up September, where basically, you know, we're taking, here's, the, here's the, the site, here's our story, how do we make that and grow it, not only to connect our users and also to connect with SEO. So there is, um, it's a big aspect to it. It's just very challenging, especially when you talk about a drug rehab. Okay, what story do we tell there, right? So, mm -hmm. and and that comes with a lot of stuff with SEO because, you know, uh, you read online, hey, Google says, you know, we need to write good content and, you know, people need to uh, be able to link to our content. Okay, if you're a shop that you sell like, uh, I don't know, bread, I mean, what capacity does your team have to write good stories about bread and what you do, right? I, I mean, this is not your job. 
So, so it becomes a little bit weird, but I mean, the bread shop will have a great story to tell. You know, you can tell an amazing story from there. You can really do some really good SEO work. Right. And it's uh, a lot of great content if you can get that story out as well. But, um, you know, what uh, misinformation is out there or myths around the SEO industry and working with the business? that you work with? What are some of the issues that come up time and time again with them? Well, I mean, the, the number one now that's kind of trending too is like SEO is dead. You know, everybody talks about, if you go online uh, a couple of months ago, like people were like, SEO is dead, you know, and it's all, all about branding and SEO is dead. Uh, so that's a one misconception and, and SEO is not dead. You know, I mean, uh, there is it's it's an industry that's growing very very fast. It's an industry that once you understand it, and you and you you put the right amount of work because it's not it's not like back in the day. Back in the day, I used to be able to build five pages, uh, get like you know some links, and suddenly I was on page one for everything. Right? Uh, that doesn't work anymore. So so right now is uh, you have to understand on how to. Um, how to again? How to build your content? How to build your brand? And most of the time, even if you have to build your brand online and doing PR work, uh, your SEO team needs to be working with a PR firm because uh, the SEO team knows what they need to grow, and the PR firm knows how to grow your brand. So that's very, very important. So uh, misconception of SEO being dead. SEO is not dead. Um, the one I really hate a lot of times is. Um, Link building is dead. You know, link building is uh, bad for you and and link building is not great and link building will hurt your site. Well, I mean, you know, for all these people that say that, you know, they can build a website and put it online and see what happens to it, you know. And that's the, and that's the best way to see it. Build an amazing website, 20, 30 pages, and see if it's ever going to rank with no links on it. And the answer is no, you know. So, so link build is not dead, but again, there's different ways – you know, you have to be smarter about it. You cannot be doing the things that people did in, uh, you know, uh, you know, 2005, 2006, you know, with the links. You know, you have to be smart about it. And I, and the best way that I love to connect with links is uh, PR work. And then also once, uh, once you know what you're doing, like starting seeing different opportunities. Like, for example, like Westgate. We can do links on on processes, right? I can go and talk to any major site and talk about the process we use in the travel industry, right? Because we have the data. We can talk about sales. We can talk about timeshare. Uh, we can talk about travel. So there is a million things you can talk about and expand your brand and your link link profile. So so link building is not dead. Hmm. So this yeah. is, I think, the two biggest ones, in my opinion. Right. Um, now, as far as uh, fears, what fears uh, come to mind when somebody is talking about hiring an SEO to do work for their company? What do you mean? Uh, oh, the fears. Um, well, a lot of the things that, you know, uh, sometimes the problem is not like an SEO. Like usually when they hire an SEO, if they find an SEO and they hire them, things are okay. I mean, there a lot. Of, everyone's afraid of the link building. I mean, this is the number one thing that everybody is like, like sometimes, you know, like I need to be careful how to bring it up to the clients because, you know, they might, you know, they might have read a blog about it and they don't want to discuss link building. Right. But, um, so, um, so I think the biggest fear if you hire somebody is, uh, yeah, if they, that's, that's what they tell me, you know, it's mostly the links and what, um, you know, what this SEO might do and, and, um, uh, uh, the, and there's a lot of other things like uh, technical things like people hide pages of that that might trigger some alerts in Google that you're trying to hide content. I mean, there's all kinds of uh, things, but m the majority of uh, feedback I get when I talk to people is like they're scared of uh, link building uh, the most. Um, so, mm -hmm. and again, this is a personal, uh, uh, a personal like, uh, uh, you know, that, that's how I feel about the, the whole, from, from my client's experience. Right. And that, that is interesting uh, that people hear that because there, there's a lot of fear-based information, I think, out there in the SEO industry 
software, you know, be careful who you, you know, go with because they might mess up your site using all these black hat uh, techniques. Mm -hmm. So it is really important that you have those uh, trust triggers that we were uh, talking about early on on your site. And then, of course, being able to talk to somebody as well, uh, doing business with a real person and telling your story also uh, really helps uh, make uh, put people at ease so that they will choose to do business with you. So, Alex, this has uh, been some fascinating stuff here today. I uh, really appreciate you sharing some information with us. If somebody wants to reach out to you to get help and uh, their strategy and uh, everything that they need to know about uh, getting more traffic and leads and profits from their website, what is the best way for them to do that? Uh, the best way is uh, to visit my site, pixelchefs.com, uh, or uh, they can email me at alex at pixelchefs.com, or they can call the company number, which is 407 283 7293. Excellent. Well, Alex Alexakis, uh, he is the founder of Pixel Chefs. Thank you very much for being my guest on Trust Factor Radio today. Thank you for having me, Neil. And to our listening and audience, if you like what you hear, hit that like button and share, and we'll see you next time on the show. You've been listening to the Trust Factor Radio with Neil Howe. To learn about the resources mentioned in the show and to listen to past episodes, go to thetrustfactorradio.com. To get a copy of the book, The Trust Factor, go to thetrustfactorbook.com. If you are ready to act now and build your authority, credibility, and trust, schedule a consultation with Neil at theauthorityarchitect.com.